Ramadan starts tonight. We about to clean this space so we have a fresh, clean space to start off the month. We love that feeling. Um, we have a lot to do. Gotta wash dishes, gotta mop, gotta sweep. I to wash these dishes. fight me okay I know y'all like to tussle I try to do day one and day two but just had to get acclimated so it is 5 55 right now um so I get to breakfast in an hour I'm defrosting my chicken because I'm gonna try to make baked chicken tonight it's the first time I ever making baked chicken um I'm gonna cook shrimp for Greg regular degular stuff um and but I wanted to share with you guys what I try to do on my day-to-day -day for this Ramadan, I'm really trying to be productive. I got a whole list. I got a whole goals. I wrote down my goals, and I got a checklist. Um, I also wrote down my du'as. So, I bought this book. It's cute. You can just do any journal. I think I love writing things down. One thing about me, I'm going to write it down. If I have an idea, a content idea, if I, if I have a thought, if I can't express myself, I'm going to write it down. I think it's just my way of really, you know, getting my thoughts together. I thought it was just so cute. So this is my Ramadan book. This is my, I said, I even wrote it here. <sighs> Becoming a better servant because that is the goal for 2024 on. And so I'm starting this with Ramadan, but this is just all things Dean. This is just all things that I want to do, my thoughts, all of the above. So I started off with just a journal entry of like, Ramadan starting. Some of my goals for Ramadan is to read Quran, watch lectures every day, make dua every day, morning and night. I used to like, I'm not gonna lie, I'm at fault for when I wake up, first thing I go for is my phone. And, but it's so funny because recently I've been saying, I and then go for my phone. But I wanna just take a, like a few minutes to just not even touch my phone and really Say alhamdulillah, but also just pray, make dua. Praying on time. So this is something that is very important because I notice myself, I, I won't miss the prayer. However, I'll wait to the last 10 minutes of the time frame of between Asr Maghrib and Maghrib or Fajr and Dua. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'll wait. And I was just like, why are you waiting when you're just rolling your phone? Can we? You can drop your phone down. It's not going anywhere. Drop your phone, pray, come back. You can come back, right? So that's something I'm trying to be intentional about, especially during Ramadan, so it could be a routine. And so after Ramadan, I'm still on it. So every day I'm reading Quran. So this is the Quran that I've been reading. It's called the Clear Quran. And it's so crazy. Like, the more I've been reading, the more I've been learning, the way I speak is differently. The way I feel is differently. The way I think is differently. And it's such a beautiful thing to witness, especially for myself, because um, being a Muslim that was born <laughs> Muslim, we also have a revert experience as we get older. Because as you're a kid, right, you're thinking like, you're doing what your parents tell you to do, right? So I'm praying because my mother said this is good. I'm praying because my father said I have to pray. I'm covering up because my father said I'm going to cover up. They'll teach you things as well. Like this is what Allah says. But as a kid, you're also doing it because your parents says to do it, right? You may not fully understand who Allah is, but you're going to say Allahu Akbar because this is something that you, you've been practicing. This is something that you've learned, right? But as an adult, when you're able to make the decisions by yourself, it's just so different. Like it... it it hits differently <laughs> because it's like, yo, this is something that I'm choosing for myself. This is something that I feel is true. This is something that you cannot steer me any wrong way. Make dua. Be grateful. Thank Allah. 
every day. You awake. That's the number one thing. I feel like you you alive right now. Thank Allah. Alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. Like, thank him. I'm about to cook because it's 6.05 and this is a new recipe, so come cook with me. Y'all yeah, already know what time it is. Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Raya. You know what we got to do. And unfortunately, I always wait to the last second, so I can't really show y'all exactly what I be doing. Tonight, we are cooking baked chicken for me. I had made this mashed potatoes uh, the other night, and mashed potatoes can go bad, so I want to finish this out. Shrimp for Greg. Baked chicken recipe. It look good to me. Shoot, so that's what we're going to be trying to make tonight. I have... Ugh, six wings here. I'm only gonna use three because I may want it for something else. Some of the seasonings that you know you use all the time, don't be like me and get the little one. Like this, oh, we always need garlic powder. So I don't know why we got this small little garlic powder like that was about to do something. I saw two videos like this and I felt like they was coming for me. I don't know why, but I felt like they was coming for me personally. So the two videos was basically saying, they were like, I don't know how you don't know how to cook. All you have to do is follow a recipe. And I feel like people are just so annoying. Cooking is not just following a recipe. It's also knowing what to put in a recipe when, you know, it's a little bland. It's a lot. She put a lot of ingredients in this one. It better be hitting. This is my girl right here though. One thing about it, she be making me feel, she be making me feel like the top chef. I am a flat girl through and through. I had to separate them personally. I just find where the bone connects. Now I'm gonna get this on. How'd that look? Seasoned. The chicken is in the oven. Woo! Now we on to the shrimp. So it's so interesting. The more you cook y'all, like if you don't know how to cook, just look at me for inspiration. You know what I mean? Cause the more you cook, the better you get at it, period. We're gonna be doing this garlic shrimp recipe. Greg really likes this recipe. All that's the frosting, I'm going to get ahead of the rice. Now we got a rice cooker. Now before I was like cooking it on the stove and it would be a hit or miss. Now it's always a hit. I think I have some rice in there though, so I don't have to make a lot, but I'm gonna make some anyway. I think it's just better if I do make some rice. Jasmine rice is superior. Trust me, just get a rice cooker. It'll change your life. Don't embarrass me now. Rice cooking. And that's it. For him, it takes him an hour to get home. So dinner for him should be ready before he gets home. But I just want to make sure this is seasoned so that when he gets here, it's good. My chicken has 12 more minutes. I'm about to go pray. Then we'll come back. By the time I'm finished, it should be done. The chicken is done. Let's see how it's looking. It don't look as good as hers. Why do I look like that? It don't look completely like this, but it don't look bad. Let's spoon that. She had a lot of sauce. I'm over here struggling. But it looked pretty good to me. His chicken. Let's move. <laughs> Sorry for tuning in here, but. This is good. If you like your baked chicken a little harder, I would definitely say try to boil it. I'm gonna take a picture. See if it's gonna be aesthetically pleasing for the... So yeah, Greg made it home. And <laughs> one, of, one of my like Ramadan goals was to be able to vibe on the Quran like at least, definitely multiple times a week. If not every day, then multiple times a week. And tonight is that night. And um, I was reading the Sorda every day, and the Sorda that I read today was... Uh, hold on. 
Sword at 72, the Jin. It said, which I find this so, so interesting. Earlier we tried to reach heaven for news only to find it filled with stern guards and shooting stars. We used to take up positions there for eavesdropping, but no one, but whoever dares eavesdrop now will find a flare lying in wait for them. And then on a footnote, it says, some jinn used to eavesdrop on the heaven, then pass on what they heard to fortune tellers. But this practice came to an end once Muhammad so um, was, was sent as a mus- messenger with the Quran. Do you know how they do? Do you know how they would do it? Mm-mm. What the jinn would do is they would they would form a ladder. They would have one jinn would be on one shoulder, and they would to the point where they would reach the heavens, right? So they would they would band together to form a ladder to reach to the heavens. Mm-hmm. Imagine how many jinn it is. So by the time. Once they hear what's going on in the heavens, they would telephone it all the way down, very fast. Think about like when she when they're getting these things that are happening, mm-hmm. and the jinn that's the closest to the fortune teller would be able to tell a fortune teller what happened. But they would also mix some some, some falsehood with the truth. Oh yeah, her mom is such and such, but then they'll take something else to add into it to make it be to get the fortune teller to get the person to do something that's of evil, mm-hmm. right? Um, and it made me think about Rasulai Silam, where like I always said, like you know. But so I still had to deal with people that were that were very hostile towards him, right? And he never really engaged, you know, in the back and forth. But there was a woman that would constantly talk, like, every time he would walk by, she would try to throw water on him, right? To one day, she would do it consistently. To one day, she wasn't there to throw the water on him. So he knocked on the door, came up to the room, and was like, well, what's wrong with her? And she was sick. So she's shocked, like, what are you doing here? And he was like, well, you weren't there to, show, to throw the water on me. I wanted to make sure that you were okay. Mm-hmm. She ended up accepting Islam. And as I reflect on my day-to-day, right, you know, I might not have been able to read as much Quran, but it made me think about the Sunnah of the Prophet. Peace and blessings be upon him. And it made me think that, like, he was a person. When someone would do harm to him, it did affect him. Yeah. He, you know, he didn't like the fact that the woman threw, like, it, it makes you feel like maybe I'm doing something wrong. Like, how can I reach this person? Like, why do you have hostility towards me? I did nothing wrong to you. When them people threw them stones at him, he did nothing wrong but come in and just preach the word of Allah. Or he didn't mind to hit his own pivot, and people would just find a way to just kind of like try to provoke him. Mm-hmm. Right? But he always prayed for either of those people. But when he made like basically saying, like, no, perhaps. And Allah did turn that whole community of Ta'if Muslim. Um, for any of my Muslim brothers and sisters out there, like, if you're in a position where you feel like that someone is challenging you, your boss at work might be trying to give you a hard time. The neighbor might be giving you a hard time. Shoot, maybe someone in your family is giving you a hard time because everybody's fast and everybody's frustrated. Just remember that the Prophet Sallallahu was also given a hard time. And his response was, then I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you a lashing or a tongue lashing, which you know, we're all, you know, as humans, we're vulnerable to, and susceptible to doing. But Rasulullah, he just prayed for people and or he just didn't engage in it. 